back to my channel, my friends. So today I wanna to share a little bit about my journey of how I'm basically building muscle, losing fat, getting stronger, getting more functional, becoming me again. And hopefully there's something in this journey that can help you get to where you wanna be um, and be your best as well. Okay, so let's do a quick recap. So in February, 2020, I had a back injury and it kind of got degeneratively worse until like June 2020. Basically from June 2020 until June 2021, I was away from the all the training that I really love to do. So I was doing like body weight home workouts, a lot of rehab work. And by Feb 2021, I'd been doing nine months of rehab, no weights, didn't touch a weight, didn't look at a weight. I couldn't look at a weight, it was too painful. <laughs> I'm just being dramatic. I was finally given the go ahead to start doing weight training again as part of my rehab, which is when I filmed like my comeback video on YouTube and I was just like ecstatic. Like I look back at the footage, I'm like, wow, I was really happy to li be lifting some weights. And I bought myself some weights from Amazon that were kind of, they were baby weights, but they didn't look like baby weights. So that training from like Feb to July wasn't really my own training. It was more about like strengthening my core, getting my spine used to loading some weight. And that's just, that's just not really how I usually train. Like I'm not really about like the spinal work, you know? So in July, 2021, after basically like 14 months of not training like myself, not feeling like myself, I could finally get back in control of my training. And like the physio was like, okay girl, it's up to you. You take the reins. And I was like, what? I feel like that was kind of like my starting point from which I then started to decide, okay, what are the goals that I wanna go for? How am I gonna do it? And what I wanted to do, and it, it's really simple really, because I'm not actually asking for much. It's just, I can sum it up in all one word. I just wanted everything. I just wanted to rebuild everything. Like my entire fitness foundation, let's just build that back up, you know? Because I feel like in that year and a half, I lost a lot. I lost a lot of strength. I lost a lot of muscle, functionality, fitness. My body composition changed and I just wanted it all back. <laughs> I just wanted to feel like myself again. I've been going for three months. I feel like it's going really well. Like it's felt surprisingly not overwhelming and I think there's a lot of tips here that can really help you get to where you wanna be, so. Yeah, if this video is helpful at all, I'd really appreciate if you gave me a big thumbs up. And if you're new, hit the subscribe button. You're always welcome to join our amazing family and we'll get straight into it. So I feel like when I'm doing a fitness journey, it's always helpful for me to know my starting point, you know? So I did a few tests and everything was down. My strength was down. I remember in January, 2020 last year, my three rep max for a squat was like 105 kilos. I hit 70 kilos in July um, this year. In terms of pull-ups, like right before my rehab started, I was at like 12.9. Like I was really going for that 13th. We all saw it, it was ugly. We don't need to show it again. <laughs> A year later, when I filmed that comeback video, we were at four. I'm not really gonna do any calculations on that percentage loss, because it's just gonna, it's just gonna hurt my soul. So safe to say strength was down. I don't think you'd ever argue that strength was up, like in any, any shape or form. Then body composition before my injury for a couple of years before, like I've always hovered around 60 kilos and I don't have a scale at home, but they have one at the gym. So I was like, let's just have a look. And I was like 66 kilos. Now I would really love to think that that was six extra kilos of just pure, dense, cold, hard muscle. But the thing is, I've never been so sedentary in my life. So I just, unless I'm a medical miracle. The thing is, I didn't really notice this because I was just gradually moving into slounge wear. I just had slowly transitioned into tracksuits. People, when I was wearing jeans, would be like, oh my God, you look really dressed up. <laughs> and when I was rocking jeans, it wouldn't be rare to catch me with a button undone. If I had a good meal, two buttons undone. So you know, these oversized loose jumpers were doing me wonders. In terms of fitness, I wasn't gonna do like a bleat test or a fitness test or anything like that. I just wanted to make like general observations. And what I observed was that after like 25 minutes of working out at the gym, I was dead. So I clearly had like no muscular endurance left. And also if I did a leg day, I was out for a week. Like the doms wouldn't go. So yeah, I basically just wanted to rebuild everything. And this is what I've been doing in the last three months in the gym and with my diet to rebuild my strength, 
rebuild some muscle, get fitter, feel stronger, more confident, more functional, change my body composition and just get back to training like more sustainably and more regularly as well. I will make Science Explained videos on how to achieve each of those goals individually in the most effective way but my goal here is to kind of do everything all at once and I don't want to be like the most shredded person in the world. I don't want to be the strongest person in the world. I just want to be really well-rounded. I honestly feel really amazing now. Like I feel energized. I feel like I'm getting back to myself. I'm not all the way there, but I'm really close. And I hope these tips and tricks can help you because they've made the journey so much easier and enjoyable and yeah. I'm gonna talk about training and diet. Um, I'll start off with training, specifically with the frequency and split. In July, four sessions a week just sounded like absurd. I was like, there's no way I can fit that in. I'd gotten used to not training for a week, sometimes not training for two weeks. So there was one thing that I knew, which was that I had to mentally lower the bar so that I didn't feel intimidated because I was honestly terrified. So I started off with three days a week. I was doing lower body, full body, upper body, and that just felt, that felt right. I can do that, I can do that three days a week, it's fine. And then once I felt comfortable with three days a week where I was kind of looking forward to my next session, I felt like I was recovering properly, then I was like, okay, let's step this up big time. Let's go to three and a half days a week. So I was basically doing like one day on, one day off, one day on, one day off. Still cycling through that like lower body, full body, upper body cycle. And it took me six weeks of training three days a week for me to get there. So then after like a good amount of time, I feel like this is like five to seven weeks, although I'm not exactly sure of the transition. Then I moved to two days on, one day off. Now that I believe computes to 4.6 recurring days a week of training. And look, I'm not saying that this is like perfect or makes sense. It just felt right. I'll be honest, there's not like a particular split here. I'm still cycling between like lower body, full body, upper body. The main focus here is just making sure that I go to the gym and I actually go for my training sessions. But that whole process of getting to this point took me about 12 weeks. So next I'm gonna talk about training styles. Now, if I was going after one particular goal, one or two training styles usually has you covered, but I was going after everything. So I really had to rely on using several different training styles simultaneously throughout my training. So the first is low to mid rep strength sets for compound lifts like deadlifts, squats, lunges, pull-ups. So these heavy low rep sets are really helping develop my overall strength and also help target my central nervous system. The next training style that I used was explosive training. So moves like lunge switches, medicine ball toss, sled jumps, all of these are amazing because they help you create like a maximum power output. So I'm jumping as high as I can possibly jump in every rep, throwing the ball as high as I can in every rep. So it's really trying to develop that explosive energy and power, so strength at speed. Then the next training style is functional hypertrophy. So you guys know that hypertrophy is about building muscle size. So really shaping your body, increasing your metabolism, really taking advantage of like that time under tension um, and controlling the lifts in both phases of the lifts. I really try and keep my hypertrophy as functional as possible so that the moves translate to movements in sport or in real life. So that means using free weights like dumbbells, plates, barbells, and really trying to use a lot of my ancillary muscles, a lot of stabilizing muscles, all of that good stuff that I personally adore. So the next training style is isolation hypertrophy. So it's still hypertrophy, but this time I'm just trying to really focus on particular muscle groups. So isolation hypertrophy is probably the training style I use the least, but it's really effective at kind of chiseling and shaping areas that I want to work on in particular. Um, areas like my shoulders, basically places where I lose muscle first, I'll just start chiseling away and become like Michelangelo. So it's really helpful to like just shape your body the way you want to shape it. 
And then the last training style is resistance-based interval training. So I'm basically really trying to increase my muscular endurance so that I can go for longer and it also helps with body composition. Intense intervals are more efficient for fat loss over continuous cardio. And I like using resistance because it really picks up the intensity without having to rely on really high impact movements. So I'd be using moves like kettlebell swings, uh, resistance band sprints, resistance band bear crawls, which are really fun, but also a killer, and ball slams. And in terms of like the work to rest ratio, I know in a lot of my HIIT workouts, I'll do like 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off which would be like a one-to-one -one work to rest ratio sometimes my rest time will be like 150 seconds so we're doing like a one to five work rest ratio because I'm really trying to prioritize resting properly so that I can go as hard as savage as I can possibly go. Next, I wanna talk about how I structure my training sessions to actually mix in all of those training styles. So first up, in any session, if I'm gonna use it, I'll start off with low rep strength training. So I'll go for about three to six heavy reps per set, um, and I'll go for about four to five sets. And between each set, I'm resting about two to four minutes because I really wanna be prioritizing lifting heavy. So I need that recovery time. Two to four minutes in the gym feels like a long time, especially four minutes. I've basically forgotten about that last set. And with this over time, it's really about progressively overloading. So after like a week or two, I'm trying to increase the weight each time so that I keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So next up, I'd move into heavy hypertrophy. So I'd be working in the six to eight rep range, which is on the low end for hypertrophy. So we're still going heavy. And most workouts will start at this point because only 25% of my workouts start with those low rep strength training sets. It's in this training phase that I really try and incorporate supersets and drop sets. They're like my BFFs. And in my head, like this is the most important part of my training session. Once I've picked one main move for those heavy sets, I'll then pick one or two explosive moves targeting the same muscles and I'll superset into them, decreasing the weight each time. So as an example of one of these supersets, I would do six to eight reps of heavy barbell lunges. Then I would go straight into 12 reps of jumping alternating barbell lunges and then I would superset into lunge switches body weight for about 15 reps. So obviously in that superset we've started heavy and then we're working all the way down to body weight. All of those moves together would be one superset where I don't rest between them but I rest at the end and I'd rest about three to four minutes so that I'm like fully recovered before going into the next one and I repeat that about five times. So it does take about 25 minutes, it does form like a really big chunk of my workout and honestly like if there's one time in your life where you're going to need an exquisite playlist this moment is it. So then it's hypertrophy time, so I'm really trying to focus on doing functional movements with free weights, and I'll try and pick two to three movements to do for four sets of eight to 15 reps. And you can really get as fancy or as simple as you like. You can really play with time under tension by doing one and a half reps, or you can go for drop sets where you do the same movement, but you decrease the weight after a certain number of reps. And those one and a half reps and drop sets are really efficient at packing a load of volume and time under tension into a really short amount of time. So it really helps build that muscle. And that takes me to about six to seven moves in total. And then the last phase of my training is the resistance-based interval training. I always leave this towards the end no matter how long my session is. Now there's no way in the world I would ever do it at any other point. So it's always at the end. What I'll do is I'll pick two to three moves that I'll do for 20 to 30 second intervals and then my rest time is about 30 to 150 seconds. To be honest I don't fully track it, I just wait until I feel like I can go again for the next set with perfect form. And I'll do that for about two to three intervals per move. Sometimes I'll alternate between moves if I'm feeling suave, you know, if I'm feeling extra suave. Um, so <laughs> that threw me off because I just love that word. I feel like this phase works really well for lower body or full body days, but if I was gonna do something for upper body, then I would do something like boxing, kick sits, lateral ball throws, chest ball throws, overhead ball throws. The ball is your best friend. And that's it, that's basically how I order the training styles into a workout to make sure that I'm prioritizing the strength moves first 
and making sure that my form is good throughout the whole workout. My workouts never last more than like 50 to 60 minutes and I feel like that's really manageable with the kind of schedule that I have now. So next up, I wanna give three really important tips on training that have made a huge difference for me. So the first is intensity. I don't go intense all the time. 50% of the workouts are intense where I'm picking heavy weights and I'm trying to use that really varied structure in my workouts like I just spoke about. Overall, I'd say to give you guys a feel, like my rate of perceived exertion, which is how hard I feel I'm working, is about a nine out of 10. And in the other 50% of my sessions, I'll intentionally go at a lower intensity. So I'll just cut straight to the functional hypertrophy part. I'm skipping the low rep strength sets. I'm skipping the super set of death, skipping all of that. And I'll just pick six to seven functional hypertrophy moves. Then I might finish it off with two to three resistance based interval training moves. And that will take me 45 minutes. And then the rate of perceived exertion for those sessions is around six or seven. So nowhere near as high as nine. This makes sure that when I'm trying to go intense, I actually am, and that my true output is what it's supposed to be. Like, it's all well and good me trying to go intense all the time and feeling like I'm going intense, but what happens is that my actual exertion just flops because I'm just not recovering. And I've fallen into that trap before where you feel like you're dying every single workout, but really you're just not making any progress. The next training tip, which I find really helpful, is literally just focusing on what is immediately in front of me. The transformation process can be really long and sometimes it can feel really overwhelming, but I just think of what am I doing today? And then just breaking it down in small steps. It's sometimes I find the hardest part of a workout is just getting to the gym. So then I just think, just get in the car. I get in the car, it's not too bad. Then when I'm at the gym and I'm thinking, oh my God, this workout's really long, I'll just break it down into that one set and I ignore everything else. It's something I think I've been doing subconsciously for years without ever thinking about it. And it was only last week when I was asked about how I would approach an Ironman in a podcast that I thought, oh, actually I do just break things out. I don't even think about the whole event. I just think about each small step at a time, immediately what's in front of me. And then the last training tip is to do with tracking progress. I feel like tracking progress is really helpful, but I'll never compare two measurements less than one month apart because the progress curve is never just a straight line up and to the right. There are just dips and troughs and, it doesn't look like a straight line. And so taking measurements too close together might just increase the chance of you not seeing the true rate of progress. So that's kind of everything I wanted to cover in terms of training. The next part was my diet because my diet really changed and it happened really slowly that I didn't even notice. Like small things, like we would just casually one day because we had loads of work to do. Should we just, let's just order a delivery? Small delivery. Now and again, it's really easy. Well, that now and again turned into four, five, six times a week. The drivers all knew me. I had so much like credit and loyalty points. And the same happened with ready meals. Like it starts off with a cheeky little, you read the packet and you're like, oh, this tastes nice. That's nice, I'll try that. Let's just try that. Let's try it one night. Let's just try this ready meal. Our involvement with food was like zero. It, you could even say it was sub-zero. So I really wanted to get back to home cooking, which I know I feel really good on. And I knew I had to switch up my diet because I wanted to change my body composition. In terms of mentally lowering the bar, it doesn't get much easier than this. I kept ordering delivery, but I made healthier food choices in my delivery deliveries. So I'd be swapping that creamy mash from Nando's with some corn or some broccoli or some sweet potatoes. And I know that doesn't sound like much of a first step, but you don't understand. Like that creamy mash, I really like that creamy mash. Okay, from Nando's, it's really good. And for my non-delivery meals, I made sure that the recipes I was picking would take no longer than 10 to 15 minutes to prep. I feel like you can 100% see that in my last what I ate in a day where they're just all very short, quick, easy meals to make. Again, mentally lowering that bar, like it needs to be as easy as possible to eat home cooked foods. Now in terms of what I ate, my calories towards the end of that year where I was away from the gym, <laughs> definitely increased. I was in a healthy surplus. I'd estimate I was around 2,800 to 3,000 calories, which I've been out before. But this time, I was extremely sedentary. In fact, I'd say I was more sedentary than sedentary because 
Sometimes you've got a commute and you sit down at your desk and you're moving, you're getting up for a coffee. I, I did none of that. I have a bean bag, you see, and this bean bag means that I can shut off every muscle group and just stay here very comfortably for hours on end. And to be honest, it was really easy to eat that much. I wasn't really eating a lot of low energy dense foods and I wasn't eating a lot of fruit or veg. So I could eat the same portion size and it would be 20 to 30% more calories um, and I wouldn't even feel any more or less full. So the key switch was keeping the volume of food the same because I never want to feel hungry. I always want to feel like I'm eating lots of food but making sure that I'm prioritizing low energy dense foods. Volume eating is the real secret to losing fat without ever feeling deprived. So I'll be eating about three to four portions of veg and two to three portions of fruit every single day. That way, because I've really packed out my diet with low energy dense foods, if I'm still feeling hungry, I can trust that my body's actually needing more energy because I'm building more muscle, I'm working out again, and I'm just overall being a lot more active. Also, it goes without saying, you guys know me, I'll never put any foods off limits. So if there's a celebration or if I just really fancy it, I can eat any food that I want. So don't worry, Crosstown, I'm still your humbly loyal customer. So these are the things that have really been working for me over the last three months and I'd say I'm not fully there, like I haven't fully rebuilt the fitness foundation that I want to, but I'd say I'm like 60 to 70% there. And you could look at my journey and think, oh my God, that's actually a really long time. But the way I think about any lifestyle change or goal like fat loss is that it's not about how quickly you get there. It's about once you're there, can you stay there for good? It's working really well for me. At no point have I ever felt unhappy, deprived, like I couldn't keep up, intimidated. I've had none of those feelings and I've just enjoyed the whole process. So I know that once I'm there, that lifestyle is already stuck and I feel like those habits have already formed. So I really hope something in this video could be helpful for you, whatever journey you're on. Everyone's journey looks different. So if you feel like you're taking your time, then don't worry about it, you're doing amazingly. And I love you guys so much. So please give me a big thumbs up if you like the video, hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more and I will see you in the next video. I love you, bye.